backstory because there is some method to this madness, strangely enough. And first of all, I'm based Kevin Scott. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm following as a visitor. Very impressive. Uh, yeah, it was funny. Anyway, so what I what I'd like to explain is so we, we play together in different outfits. That's a really hip way of describing something. And uh, it just so turned out that we both stumbled on the fact that we're both wrestling enthusiasts. Strangely enough, my wrestling enthusiasm started very feverishly in 1983 and ended extremely feverishly in about 1984 and a half. So my knowledge, though, I've yet to meet anybody outside of the WWF who 
knows more than I do, and I do challenge somebody to a no holds barred uh, quiz. And but after that, I sort of dropped off. But I've always had a uh, or fixation for some of the stuff you're seeing here. And Kevin's hit me to some of the clips. Uh, not everything is stuff that I was aware of, but most of it is stuff that I grew up with in my childhood. Um, and just to be more convoluted, a lot of the tracks that you're hearing, they may not sound recognizable, but we base them off of uh, bumper music that WWF used to use in the 80s. So they, they had a lot of uh, Tears for Fears and The Police and uh, Bill Collins and different stuff like that. So you may hear remnants of those type of grooves, but we're not sampling them in this verbatim Kanye West sort of way. That sort of, you know, just lift four bars and say words on it. I don't know what it's not like an old man. But uh, it's very convoluted and twisted, but the, the, the tracks are in there. And um, I did have an experience of playing drums on a Royal Rumble uh, SummerSlam something or another thing. Yeah. WWF headquarters in Stanford was a very frightening experience for me. This was 10 years after I'd been just wanting to stay very far away from all the steroids and other abuse that I did to myself during the early 80s as a 10 year old, which I'm still recovering from. But, uh, so I went to this lair of a place, a dungeon, gigantic building on I-95 in Connecticut, uh, WWF headquarters. They sent a limo for me, strangely enough. I've never had a limo sent for me outside of maybe the Today Show. I think Jane Pauley could have been me. She sent the limo personally. Not true. But anyway, uh, get Jane Pauley. So, uh, we have WWF ties, and now I have this weird, sick thing where I want this to get back to Vince McMahon, and I want this to get back to the, to the powers that be, and I want them to know that it, this exists. Uh, I'll leave you with this story. I sent a demo on YouTube. I uploaded a demo of a very early version of this track, of one of the tracks, just very haphazard, just to, so Kevin could have a listen. Literally within 30 seconds from the upload, this has never happened before, I got a cease and desist. Within 30 seconds. So there must be some algorithm where like, you, you use the WWE logo and, and Google and YouTube, they're all in cahoots and they see that logo and an immediate email comes to you. It was taken down. Violation of copyright within 30 seconds. You know, uh, I don't think you could you know, do much better than that, no matter what you put up. So Vince has really got his shit together. That's all I got to say. Um, and on that note, we're going to continue with some of the more colorful people in the world. So there's a lot of darkness in the WWF, which I'm willing to discuss off stage. <laughs> Something I witnessed, and, and that's actually true, and it's not very funny. It didn't happen to me, luckily, but sure. But I'm willing to, uh, you know, confess that he was interested. So. Thank you all for coming. We'll get off the stage as quick as we physically can. We have about 17 more tunes, so just stay. Schultz as the fans call you. You see something like this happen, it's got to be upsetting to you. It don't upset me at all, baby. Let me tell you, I think it's great. You know what I mean? If you're going to go on my hunt, you got to be able to run with the big boys. If he can't run with the big boys, he said, get out. He shouldn't come out here. Last time I was in San Francisco, I went downtown looking for a woman. You know what I mean? I wanted a woman. I couldn't find a woman. I found a lot of men that look like women. Oh, the 
heavyweight champion of the world is going to be defending against this man. Do you uh, prefer that I call you Adrian or Adorable? Adorable. Adorable. How, how did you ever get that name? When I woke up in the morning, I thought I was Mrs. Adonis. All right. Introducing first, from New York City, weighing 290 pounds, the Adorable Adrian Adonis.